Okay. Um, first question, Fatal, is uh, after Pac got out of jail in 95, uh, how soon was it that you went out to L.A. to meet up with him um, after he got out? Oh, well, he was out for about an hour. Well, as soon as he got out, he sent he sent us on a plane. So we got there the next day. Oh, okay. And you were in Jersey at the time, or were you in the Atlanta? Say that again? Were you in Jersey um, before you went oh, to, to California? Yeah, I was Yeah, I was in Jersey. We got to go to Gaston? All right, so so you get to L.A., you guys start working on um, All Eyes on Me. What's the first song that you did uh, with Pac for the, for the All Eyes on Me sessions? Well, the first song I recorded was All About You. I, I, I definitely wasn't feeling that song at the time. and He, he was like, yo, man, this is going to be the shit. This is going to be the one the ladies love you for. But I, I was on some hardcore dumb shit, and he was like, nah, that ain't what it is. This the one. So he wound up doing all about you. Okay. Was was uh, Nate present when you uh, did your? Was everybody present when you did your vocals for that one, or was part of the track already? Um, nah, just just only people that was me and Gaddafi were there, and uh, Drew Down was there. Drew Down, Drew Down was there. Some nigga from Capitol. Okay. Did Drew Down on the on the on the on the first one? Did he actually drop a verse on that song, or did he just always just do the intro? No, nah, he just did the intro. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So, um, after uh, uh, all eyes on me and all that stuff, what was the? I mean, did you guys know right away that you were going to work on a on an Outlaws album? Was that part of the plan, or were you guys just recording so much at the time? Well, we was recording so much. Originally, the thought was, the thought was going to be Fatal, Gaddafi, and Tupac was going to be the Outlaws, and the other members was, was going to be, and Pac and the other members were going to be Dramacidal. So Pac would have been in every group, but it would have been broke down in two groups, Dramacidal and the Outlaws. But we was recording so much, and the Outlaws shit just clicked off so hard. And we all just was like, fuck it, we might as well be on some hot bar shit. Hmm. Okay. And originally, the way you hooked up with Pac is, is through Gaddafi, correct? Yeah, Gaddafi was my boy in the hood. And, um, you know, I was basically running the hood where I was from, my part of Jersey, Montclair, New Jersey. And Gaddafi was my dude. And, um, I didn't even know he was Pac's brother. But me and him already had this motherfucking bond that, you know, it was already on, so found out Pop and brother. It was on. He introduced me in it, and we took it from there. Okay. Um, if you can, if you can narrow down, narrow it down. What is the favorite song? Your favorite song that you did with both Pac and Gaddafi on the same track? The Pac and Gaddafi on the same track, I would say yeah. probably uh, Made Niggas. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Are there any? Uh, um, in- interesting stories that you can tell us about the um, about the video shoot for that video. For made people... niggas, nah, nah, yeah, yeah. we um, uh, it was this guy over there. I don't know who this guy was. It was some guy that was head of the, uh, head of the props and all that, like the fake guns we were having for the video shoot. And he wound up saying we was taking too long and all this. Pop was taking long as hell and. And, you know, he thought he was some kind of taekwondo karate master and all this shit. So Pac and him had words, and when we heard he was having words, and Pac just called out for the outlaws, and, it was, and, it, and you know, we just beat him the fuck up. Hmm. All right. So, um, okay, there's, you know, everybody knows the story. Uh, we talked to Noble. He told us about, you know, the land. Land Rover or whatever with the crash, and then you went back to Jersey. What do you th- say about that? Oh, you want to hear about that one? I can give you some insight on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give give us your version on that one. He didn't say anything bad. I, he just said, so go ahead. No, nah, I, I, I know no probably wasn't there, but this is what happened. Hawk had got, got a new truck. He got the truck basically for us, and, you know, <laughs> the nigga Pop was like, yo, fatal. He already knew how it was. The nigga was like, Fatal, do not drive the fucking truck. He said, he don't know. He told him. He told everybody, don't let Fatal drive the truck. 
I wound up getting drunk off a goddamn 40 ounce in California. They had the real 40s out there in Cali. <laughs> that motherfucking on um, with my man Speedy and shit. We wound it up. I got drunk. I'm trying to show off for this white bitch and shit. I'm like, yo, Edie, let me get the keys. Edie like, man, I ain't giving you the keys. I'm like, Edie, let me get the keys. Edie like, man, I ain't giving you the keys. So he wound it up uh, leaving the keys and shit. I wound it up grabbing the keys. Key, drove to the liquor store. I made it all the way the fuck back home with me, this white girl, and my man Speedy. I call myself New Jersey driving this shit. I'm like, this how they do it in New Jersey drive. <laughs> Yo, I met that shit up right into a fucking pole, word up, right in the driveway. Edie and them looked out the window. I'm like, damn. I tried to be all tough. I'm like, yo, fuck it, call Pop. <laughs> the niggas called Pop. I got on the phone with Pop. I'm like, I tried to own up to my mistake. I'm like, Pop, I crashed the truck. That's when I knew I was in trouble. That nigga said, what truck? Nigga, we only had one motherfucking truck. Right after he said that, I just hung the phone up. I told Gaddafi mother to give me a, a one-way ticket back to North New Jersey. Pop never, Pop never even saw me after I crashed the truck. I just made the decision to go the fuck home because I ain't feel like getting shot or whatever the fuck his crazy ass had in store for me. Yeah. And how long was that before he ended up uh, uh, passing in September? Huh? How, how, like, what month was that that, that you uh, um, did that before? You know, like, I'm trying to figure out um, how long it was before he passed away that you went back to Jersey. Shit, that, that, that was probably, um, that shit had to be like a month after we moved over there. What was the uh, the last song that you that you ended up recording with, with Pac? Do you remember which, uh, what that one was? No, uh, I don't even, I don't remember what that one was. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Fredo, I missed that whole whole part about, about the outlaws. Some some wanted to sign, some didn't want to sign with Death Row. Can you uh, repeat repeat about uh, about that after he died, what people were talking about? Well, after Pac died, it was a thing while he was living. And the last couple of days, we used to, you know, we used to sit around all, you know, we as the outlaws, not all of us, but we used to sit around, and some of us used to be like, you know, a little salty that we weren't signed to Death Row and all this other shit, and really not waiting for Machiavelli Records. So Pac used to always sit us down in, his, in, the, park, in the mansion and be like, dog, y'all want to sign to Death Row? He used to black out on us. You couldn't imagine the words he used to use. You want to sign a fucking death row? You really want to know? Some of us wanted to. Some of us didn't. Before he got to tell us exactly why we shouldn't sign the death row or why he thought we shouldn't or why he thought the row wasn't good, a good place for us to sign with, he died. And nobody really got a chance to, you know, figure it out. Well, I was a little street savvy myself, and I know a couple of other people was, but it seems as though everybody wasn't on the same page as far as signing on death row. Now, when that nigga died, I just wanted from whoever. I wanted from Shug a one-way ticket back to fucking North, New Jersey, North Airport. That's all I wanted. I didn't want to sue nobody. I didn't want to do nothing. Like, rap was, that was it for me. I was cool with just being around Pop for the time he was hearing shit. And then, like, months and shit passed, like, some niggas was coming to my hood, like, yo, you... I'm trying to get you a record deal, la, la, la. I wasn't thinking about rapping. I'm hustling. I was the man in my hood before I left. So when I went back, it was still all good, even better, because of pop. And the nigga said he can give me a record deal. I said, if you could bring me some paperwork saying that, nigga, I'm going to sign a fucking contract. And that's what happened with my um, solo deal. It wasn't a strategical thing. Well, I'm going to go sign here because it ain't happened like that. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And you could tell from the sales of that first album. I just did that shit because it was there. Right. Okay. And um, after uh, Pac died and eventually the music started to come out, at first um, it seemed like a lot of your, a lot of stuff that you were on, your verses were getting chopped out, like on Still I Rise and stuff like that. Um, is there any particular reason why um, why things were going that way, or is that just what the other members felt like doing at the time? I mean, well, when Gaddafi died, you know, one of, one of Napoleon, one of the outlaws' cousins killed Gaddafi, shot him in the fucking head. Me? I wasn't with that shit. And I couldn't see how everybody else was with that shit. 
I wanted to kill a nigga. I wanted to do everything it was to do to a nigga. But what I didn't want to do was sleep in the fucking house with a nigga's cousin that just killed my boy. That's that, I didn't want to do that shit. And then yeah, I just oh, just that you weren't I, with the rap. You know, you you weren't trying to turn to rap. You know, and and they were. And, yeah, the music. Yeah, after 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 the niggas murdered Gaddafi in cold fucking blood, like he was an enemy of the fucking state. I couldn't understand why niggas that we just. Come on, that's pop fucking brother, dog. Like, if it wasn't for him, none of this shit wouldn't be... Yo, dog. I mean, if I got to explain this shit to niggas, niggas going to just have to grow the fuck up and, and, and feel that shit for themselves. And in this case, time wound up healing that shit. So the answer to the question is, me and all uh, the outlaws, we all went on the same page. So for them to make that move and take me off still I rise... I guess it was a business move so they can cut niggas in and get niggas points and, you know, basically shave me out of this shit. But I didn't give a fuck because I was getting money any more fucking way. But, yeah, that's basically what happened with the with the Still Our Rods. And like I said, time heals everything. There was some bad decisions made and there was some good decisions made. That just happened to be one of the bad decisions. Yeah. Okay. And now um, it seems as though... Uh... Castro is having his his problems with with uh, with the group or whatever. He did an interview, you know, um, um, airing out some of the stuff that he was frustrated with. Have you got a chance to hear that interview or hear what he's upset about? Can you can you understand what he's saying just from the standpoint of of you know there was a time that you weren't you know um, you know a hundred percent down with the outlaws and everything that they were trying to do. Nah, well, the thing is this. I'm always going to be 100% outlaw because, nigga, I, if, you know, it was the name between the little homies and the fucking outlaws. And, and you know, we voted the outlaws. So I'm always going to be an outlaw no matter what anybody says, including the outlaws. So in order, I, I really don't get involved. I had legitimate beef with the situation with the outlaws as far as Gaddafi getting murdered. I mean, besides that, a murder or something, I don't feel like, the outlaws should even be fighting and nothing like that or, or, or having trouble with anything. Castro, that's my boy, you know, that's Kadav's cousin, that's Pop cousin. He should be pushing He should be pushing the most, you know what I'm saying, to try to make this music shit work because he's definitely Pop's boy, you know. So I haven't heard the interview or nothing, and I'm sure whatever was said, you know, he had good means to say it, but, you know. And time heals every fucking thing. Castro was just recently in the studio with us. He's on a new album. You know, everybody make mistakes. You know, it's all good. Okay. All right. And um, a lot of people have, you know, I don't know where they got this information from, but according to a lot of people, they try to say that when you went back to Jersey, that that's when Noble was brought in to, to I wouldn't say be your re replacement, but that's what gave him that opening to get into the group. Um, is, is there any truth to that, or, or not really? Nah, there's no, there's no truth to that. When, when I got the, when I got the Cali, look, I was a motherfucking soldier, the worst kind of nigga. Before I even went to Cali, before I even met Pop, I was in my own hood doing that shit like niggas is supposed to, to the fucking max. So no less the left the hood, smart as hell. He got the fuck out the hood and went to Cali. Trying to make a better life for himself. Two years after that, that's when Gaddafi, you know, me and Gaddafi, we running the whole hood, hustling, getting money, driving, shooting niggas. We doing everything it is to do. So when Gaddafi pulled me in, we going to Cali. We going to take this show on the road. We going to Cali. Boom, we get to Cali. You know, we there for a couple of days. And the motherfucking bright idea clicked in my head that one of the homies from my hood, from back home, is in Cali. I don't, me being who I am, I don't give a fuck where in Cali he's at. If he's from my hood, then I'm going to get him because, nigga, I'm, I'm a soldier. So Pac had it, wound up going in the studio and having some long-ass meeting with Suge and these niggas, and we took the limo and we went and got no. We went and got noble from his house. I convinced that nigga. Yo, nigga he's like, yo, we going to school. I'm going to school. I said, nah, nigga, we rapping with Tupac. You know who Tupac is? He like, yeah, I, I can't remember what he said. I said, well, then that's what the fuck we doing. I took the nigga, he, he got in the car with us, he came back to the crib with us. Boom, Pop seen him, Pop was smelling him, Pop was like, Fader, what if we kill somebody? Is this nigga going to tell? I said, nigga, if we kill somebody, this nigga ain't even going to know. I just tried to smooth him over and shit, and that shit worked. You know what I'm saying? But I was going back and forth to court 
from California because I had a big ass case I was fighting. You know, the shit don't stop because you go to Cali, you still got to go to court, nigga. So I was going back and forth to court. Now, when I'm going back and forth to court, you know, Nova was dead. Nova had the jersey flavor. Pop was smelling him on the strength. Fatal and them brought him in. So, yeah, dog, he's a fucking outlaw. No questions asked. But as far as him taking my place, because uh, I got sent back to Jersey or whatever the fuck they talking about, nah, that was some bullshit. I'm the one that went and got Noble from California and from Rancho Cucamonga, wherever the fuck he was living at. That was my work. I disregarded everything everybody else said, and I went and got him, like the fucking boss I am. And yeah, Pac didn't like that shit. I used to get into a beef with Pac over every fucking thing, making decisions and shit. But yeah, that's what happened with Noble and no, and that shit... And my decision was true. My decision was real right because later on in life, when I did wind up fucking up with the outlaws, I'm in Jersey recently, like last year. Like, you know, I, I had enough of the hood. I felt like a nigga was going to kill me or I was going to kill somebody. I called Noble up on the phone, like, crying, like, dog. Like, yo, I got to get the fuck from out of here. This shit ain't working for me. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. And... First thing Noble said was, like, come on down to the A, nigga, and we're going to figure it out. So if I wouldn't have never brought that man in, I, you know what I'm saying, how I brought him in, it's a good chance that he would have never reached back and brought me back in. And my life might be over or fucked up. So, you know, decisions and mistakes. That was another good decision. Right. Okay. And uh, you, uh, for a while after, uh, I mean, this is way later. We're fast forwarding, you know, way far. But you started doing a lot of recording with uh, with Ja Rule um, on the uh, the Blood in My Eye album and stuff like that. Were there ever any plans or thoughts of you uh, signing over there with with Murder Inc. and doing doing something with with him? Nah, well, to the to the naked eye, to a nigga that ain't you know street savvy, or how they say, or to the naked eye, it would have looked as if them niggas wanted to sign me, you know, but, again, I was cool with Ja Rule. I wasn't cool with Irv Gotti and all these other niggas that made decisions. And and, and when I was down with Rule, I met Rule way before, you know, his, his stardom. I met Rule way before before he even came out, you know what I'm saying? He was cool as hell even then. So when a nigga blew up, I was in jail and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And when I seen a nigga, he just snatched me up, and he, you know, he was in that little shit with 50 Cent. And me being who I am from Jersey, I don't give a fuck who you in a beef with, nigga. Especially if it's animated, and ain't nothing really going to happen. Let's get it in. Them niggas was cutting checks, and I needed the fucking money, and jobs not do. Okay. All right. You mentioned uh, uh, the new the new uh, Outlaws album that Castro was in there the other day working on with you guys. Who all um, who all is going to be uh, uh, working with you guys on the on the new album? Do you have a lot of guest appearances, or are you keeping it all just strictly? Out Man, we keeping that shit. We we really keeping it to a minimal. But we got a couple on there. We got a couple of fools that count. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't like you know. You ain't, I mean, it ain't going. You ain't gonna see nothing tight over there. You ain't gonna hear a bunch of chanting and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a bunch of rider music. You know what I'm saying? Man, it ain't gonna be nothing too exotic, but we definitely gonna keep it keep keep the uh we gonna keep it brief on the motherfucking uh features. But we got a couple of niggas on there. We got we got who we got? Young Buck, Lloyd, Bum B, you know what I'm saying? We got a couple just to name a few. But shit. Nigga budget is smitted than a motherfucker. We gotta watch the budget, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So when when do you think uh, uh that one will be coming out? Say that again? When I think it's coming out? When, when, yeah, when do you think the album will be coming out? <laughs> when the album, the album coming out in like, what month is this? March is supposed to come out in May. Oh, okay. Probably coming out in May, but you know, maybe June. You know how niggas is. Probably June, you know what I mean? Especially when niggas in charge of their own shit. We got the independent jumping off. We're going to run it through Fontana. But, you know, it's supposed to be May, early May, but who knows? Who knows? You need another feature, too, man. We got a secret. We're supposed to be getting with the nigga Prodigy and shit on this new shit. Nah, I ain't going to let oh, that yeah, out the bag. Cut it. that part. Okay, I'll cut that out. Keep or, that secret. <laughs> so, all right, before we end, is there anything you want to uh, talk about? Anything you want to speak on maybe that I didn't ask about? I mean, I know you've done like 6,000 interviews, so I'm sure you get I mean, I'm out at answering the same I don't want to say... You know. 
I don't want to say too much. I just want to say O4L. That means outlaw for life. Shout out to Edie, No, K. Castro, Napoleon, and my dog Killer Gaddafi. And you know we all Machiavelli related, so that goes without saying. You know, reach for the motherfucking sky. We out here. Perfect timing coming real soon. Outlawsmedia.net. You know, you know, Twitter us at the Outlaws at, at the real Edie Donna. Facebookers, Young Noble Hussein Fatal. Edie, Edie Don Outlaw, and you know we out here. You're getting to it.